So I use DMenu as my application launcher, as well as basically whenever I need any sort of makeshift interface and don't want to do something inside of my terminal. It worked great for that, it's very easy to make a script to go and mess around with that, and I love the application. But today we're looking at another launcher application, this one is known as Ulauncher. Now, it is going to look a little bit strange inside of Awesome WM, so I'm going to have this blue border around it like outside of where the actual end of the application is, and there's also going to be some blur in here as well. So the blue border is there because Awesome WM doesn't know where to actually put the window border because the application actually does some of its own compositing. As you might notice, it has a bit of a drop shadow. So I could fix that by just ignoring window borders on this one application, but it's perfectly fine for the sake of testing. It doesn't affect usability, it's just going to look a little bit weird. The exact same thing is going to happen inside of the settings menu. Once again, it won't affect usability, it's just going to look a little bit weird inside of a tiling window manager. Ignoring how weird it looks for those things, what can it actually do? When you run this, it is going to run a daemon in the background to allow you to toggle the application on and off when you actually want to see it. So by default, I believe that's going to be set to control space. But I use FCITX, and if I have it set to control space, that will interfere with my Japanese text. So I've gone and modified that to F1, and it works perfectly fine. So if we start typing in the name of an application, let's say something like Alacrity, you know, it works like a normal application launcher does. Now, being a regular application launcher, it's going to be looking for your desktop files rather than the way that DMenu works by default, which is search for every single executable program on your system. The problem with running everything executable on your system is there's going to be a lot of stuff that it doesn't make sense to open it from DMenu. For example, if I just run FFmpeg with no options from DMenu, that's not going to make any sense. So obviously, that doesn't have a desktop entry. There's a couple of ways we can move around this menu, we don't necessarily have to use our mouse. So you can use your arrow keys to go up and down, and then when you find the thing you want to run, let's say Airshipper for example, pressing enter on that will go and run it. But you might have also noticed that next to all of the things in there, there was an alt key and then a number. So instead of jumping directly to that thing, what it's actually going to do if I press alt 4, is it's going to go and run it for you. Now there is one obvious problem with relying on desktop files. While the well-written applications like Brave or Firefox or say Chromium will actually have desktop files set up, I don't know why Pycom is there. That shouldn't be there. There's a lot of applications out there that won't have desktop files because the developer just decided to not write it, and there's applications like Pycom which shouldn't have a desktop file because you're never going to run Pycom like that. You want to run Pycom from the terminal so that you can actually go and modify it and actually do something productive with it. I have not done a video on how to make desktop files, but luckily they're really easy to make. And I actually do have a custom one in here, so you might have noticed a couple of times we had editor. So editor isn't something that you get when you install your system or anything like that. What this is going to do is run Alacrity and then launch up NeoVim. It's very easy to make. It's like one or two lines of a desktop file. There is way more you can do if you really want to, but something this basic takes a minute or 30 seconds even. I might have to do a video at some point though, I'll add it to the list I guess. Now as for the next feature, this actually has a built-in file browser, so the way you have to start it is starting with something that would be in a file path, so either starting it with a slash or starting it with a tilde. Anything else is going to be treated like you're searching for an application, so I can't just go and search for something like say Brody and then have that work. Now do keep in mind this isn't going to be a file manager, it is just going to be a file browser. So we can do things like open up files and things like that, but not really much else. So if I go into something like say my pictures, and then I go into say this one here, we have this picture of Torvald. If I go and press enter on that, it's then going to open up that picture. Now the way this works is it's only going to open up files that you've got configured working properly inside of XDG Open. So that is a separate application that your system uses to work out what default applications to open up things with. 
If you go and open up something with, say, your regular file manager, in my case being PCMan FM, if I say open up this video here, I've got it set to open it up with MPV. If you don't have your XD default set up, it won't work properly. U-Launcher has another cool feature which lets you search for something online. So the search engines that are configured, you actually have complete control over. By default, if we go into our preferences and into our shortcuts, it's going to have Google, which if we type in G and then pass in some values, it's going to do a Google search. It's also got SO for Stack Overflow and then Wiki for Wikipedia. So let's go and use a couple of those. If I go and type in G and then pass in an option, let's go and say hello and then world. So it's gonna go and search Google for hello world. And if we give it a moment, actually it's opened up on my second screen. As you can see, it's gone and searched for that. Now, ignore the second tab. I was doing this off camera and I uh, forgot to close it. Now, the reason why Launcher didn't close there is because I just crashed. Now, I went and tried it again and it didn't crash the second time. So, I don't know what happened there. I've never seen that happen before. It must occasionally break like that. Most of the time, though, it's completely fine. So, as for making a new search... Basically what we need to do is go back into the preferences and then go over to the shortcut section again and click on add shortcut. So let's give it a name. Let's say duck duck go, which I don't know why it's not configured by default. Let's give it a keyword. I'm going to give it DDG and then we have to give it either a query or a script. So in this case, the query is just going to be a URL. As for the script, we can actually use any scripting language we want. As long as we have the interpreter installed on our system, it's gonna work perfectly fine. So if you're doing a DuckDuckGo search, basically what we need to do is pass in this right here. And then as we can see, percentage S is going to be a placeholder for a query in a URL. I'm gonna pass that in right there. And if we go and click save, go back to the application, so if we go and search for DDG now, we'll notice there are two DuckDuckGo's. One of those is actually from an extension I'll show you in just a bit, but the one that we just made is this one right here. So let's go and search for Hello World, and it should go and search DuckDuckGo for that, and it worked perfectly fine. You could do this for any URLs that need a string replacement. Even for something like, let's say you have a website and you know the different names of the pages, you could have the string replacement be in that URL and then jump to the different pages on the website. It's not the best use of it, but it certainly would work. Now, one thing about the placeholder is the placeholder only works inside of a query. It's not going to work inside of a script, but the documentation does have examples of how to actually get those values if you are doing it in a script instead. Now onto those extensions. Currently I've only got two installed. So we've got the emoji extension and the DuckDuckGo extension. Now the DuckDuckGo extension works basically the same way as doing DuckDuckGo search. Normally the keyword would be set to DDG, but because I want to show you, I'm going to just change it down to just D. So if we go back into Launcher, type in D, as we'll see, we have the DuckDuckGo search here, and then I can go search for something like Hello World. The only benefit using DuckDuckGo like this is it will also show you DuckDuckGo suggested results. But at the end of the day, I, I never really use the suggest results anyway, so it doesn't really change anything for me. And I think the application just crashed again. Okay then, of course it's going to crash during a video. So as for the other extension, basically that is just an emoji lookup table. So I can go and use that, and then we can go and search for something like, I don't know, uh, grinning face with smiley eyes, sure. And then press enter on that. If I go into something I can paste in, as we can see, basically, it's just going to add it into our clipboard, making it so we don't have to, like, mess around to get the emoji we want to send. But that is by no means the only extensions that exist. So over on the extensions page, we'll notice there is a discover extensions button. Basically, what this is going to do is take us over to the Launcher website that lists out all of the extensions. So instead of going newest first, let's go by GitHub stars. And as we'll see, there's things like the emoji picker, like we saw. There's also a process murder. So instead of having to go in something like HTOP, for example, you can kill processes from U Launcher. There's Google Translate. There's Clipboard, GitHub integration, a window switcher, Spotify API, a better file browser, system management, like all of this really cool stuff. There's Obsidian stuff in here, Docker, GitLab. 
basically anything you can think of, you can make an extension for if there is some sort of API that you could interact with. And Ulauncher already has a lot of really useful extensions that you might already want to use. Now, adding the extension, I actually think is one of the nicest way of adding extensions. If we go into, say, the Unicode extension here, what it's going to do is give us a GitHub URL. Basically, what we need to do is go back to the application, go to add extension, and then paste the link. And then it'll go and download the extension, and we're good to go. That's all we need to do. So if we go out of that and go search for, I think it was UN, as we'll see, Unicode is there. And then I can start searching for, say, Katakana, and it should list out a bunch of Katakana. On that extensions page, there's also a link to the documentation down here with create your own. And I haven't had an extensive look through the documentation, but it seems like it's functional enough that you can go and make something. So if we go to the action section, I don't know why I didn't load for a second. Everything in here seems documented enough that you can basically work it out. Now, if you want to make an extension, they are going to be written in Python 3. So Python is not a difficult language. If you don't know it, it's fairly easy to learn. But you can't just go and use any scripting language you want like you could when you're setting up a script. Now, in the case of themes, they're handled a little bit more manually. I don't really know why. They've already got this system right here working really well for extensions. I don't know why they didn't just use the same thing. So if we go over to the preferences, as we'll see, there's a couple of themes in here. We've got elementary light, uh, which looks like that. We've got elementary dark, which looks like that. We have Ubuntu, which looks like that. And then add waiter, which looks like that. They're very similar a slightly different shade of grey. Now, to install a theme, first we need to go and get a theme. And luckily there is a GitHub gist here where there is a big dump of them that we can just go and use. I'll leave a link to this one in the comment section down below. So let's say I want the, I don't know, the Minty Dark for example. Let's go over to that one, and if we go and download this, basically what we're going to need to do is just dump this into a place inside of our config directory. That'll be located inside of the .config directory, inside of uLauncher, and then inside of a folder that won't actually be made by default. And that folder is going to be called user-themes. Make sure it is user-themes and not user-themes. So if we just go and dump that folder into here, basically we'll be good to go. We don't need to reset the application or anything, under the color theme right here, Minty Dark has already been loaded. And if we open up uLauncher and search for something, as we can see, the color theme has changed. Now, one thing does slightly bother me about this. So, we have one folder in here that is ext underscore preferences and then user dash themes. I don't know why you would switch between them and not be consistent. But there's also documentation on how to do a theme. It isn't linked inside of the application, but it is on the same documentation page as the extension page. Now, this is just a GTK application, so everything's going to be done in CSS and... Basically, it just sends you over to the GTK guide on how to do CSS. It's not the best documentation. I would like more specific information about what names you need to use for this application, but it does work. I say follow my normal advice. Basically, take one of the existing themes and then modify it to the point where you actually like it rather than trying to do something from scratch. Now, this isn't the normal type of application I like to use. I am more than happy to do stuff in D-Menu, and if I need some sort of new functionality, I can go and write a script to do so. It's not really that difficult. But, I do like the idea of uLauncher, and I do like the idea of having this one place that has all of these extensions set up for it. This isn't an application that just nobody uses and still has an extension framework. This actually does have a fairly extensive library of extensions and a lot of common things you want to do already have a script written for them. And I do like the look of D menu. I like the very flat look, but I can understand wanting to have something a little bit fancier, I guess. If you want ultimate fanciness, obviously go run something like Rofi and I've seen some ridiculous things you can do with that application, but this is sort of a, a nice middle ground, even though it doesn't exactly play super nicely inside of a tiling window manager. If you're using something floating, 
it should be much, much better in that regard. Let me know your thoughts in the application down below. But that should be it for me. And before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Donald, Logan Michael, Andrew Mitchell, Nathan, David Carl Will, Brennan, Chico Bento, Jamie Joseph Josh, Michael, Peter D. Steven Tees through Tony Tushar, and all my $2 supporters. If you like to support work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, start, leave a pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays, where I live stream twice a week and... I upload about five or so YouTube shorts, and this channel is available over on Odyssey. That's it for me, and... Ah, now, I don't know why I did the old outro, but that's how we're ending it.